Today we're going to take a look at Film Creator and how to use it to create a very straightforward, very effective film emulation. The Film Look Creator actually creates what Blackmagic calls its own sort of film emulation. Do keep in mind that when it comes to film emulation, you could try to recreate a Kodak 2383 film emulation. You can try to recreate a Fujifilm 3513 film emulation or any other film stock emulation. But actually, you could take all of the elements that comprise a film emulation and create your own film stock, let's say. And the look that we're creating here is very simple. The snow tree is very straightforward. We're going to see how it doesn't take much to create a very effective and good looking film emulation. And before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Selfie. As a content creator, one of the smartest things I did for my business was launch my own digital store. And I did that with Selfie. Selfie is an all-in-one creator platform that lets you sell digital products, subscriptions, and even print-on-demand merch. You can also sell things like eBooks, courses, and exclusive content. You get an online store that you can customize to fit your brand. You can also set up your own affiliate program and share the revenue that you make with the people that support you. You get a built-in email marketing, upselling, and cart abandonment recovery. And there are zero transaction fees, which is rare at this price point. If you are a colorist, a filmmaker, or any kind of creative looking to start selling your own products or build a passive income stream to support yourself, I have two discount codes that you can use to get a discount on Selfie. You can get 50% off the starter plan by using the code GEORGE50, or you can get a 35% discount off the business plan when you use the code GEORGE35. You can try a 14 day free trial on Selfie today, no credit card required. Selfie is genuinely one of the best platforms out there for creators, and that is why I continue to use it myself and why it continues to be a part of this channel. So thank you Selfie for your support and for sponsoring this video. So now let's get into the breakdown of how I created this look. And this is the image that we're working with today. The first thing I did was adjust my primaries. And for this shot, all that basically consisted of was breaking down the exposure by one third of a stop. And slightly cooling down the image and tinting it a little bit just to get a nicer balance and that's pretty much all i did here i didn't do any contrast or any saturation adjustments after that i jumped into my secondaries in this case it was my hsl and my power windows and in my hsl all i did was increase the density and for this shot i found i was able to increase it all the way and get this very nice beautiful texture here in the skin tones and because of the nature of this background i didn't have too much to worry about in terms of creating artifacts if you are applying the same effects to your image, just be a little bit more conscious here about how much density you're adding. You might find that you're not able to push it as far as I did here. What I also did here was saturate my reds just a little bit more. And so in this HSL node here is where you can affect the hues, the saturation of those hues, and the luminance values of those hues if you need to. And then we have my Power Windows Compound node, which I use to just slightly relight the scene and bring the focus into our subject here. I typically always use Compound nodes for my Power Windows, so I'll just double click here to go in. And this is all I did. This is a parallel node structure, and I have two nodes here, basically a subject node and a background node. And then parallel with that, we have this node here where I just created this little ramp, which helps lead the eyes up to his eye line here. In the sub node, what I did was add a power window, placed it over our subject here, and then over in the shadow wheel, I just bumped it up by a third of a stop, right? And what that helps to do is, let me turn this off real quick. Here's before and after. And what this little bump helps to do is bring up the details in the shadows. And along with that, what I did was come over to the dark wheel and decreased it by one third of a stop. And what that did was it helped to bring a little bit more contrast and crispness in the subject. So without this, the blacks do get lifted a little bit, but because I brought them down by the same amount that I affected in the shadow wheel, the more darker areas, which are these areas, they're being pretty much protected. And so I'm getting a nice little detail recovery in the shadows, but not in the blacks. That's perfect. That's going to help create a natural lift in our subject. And because I am using the HDR wheels and each of these HDR wheels are affecting a specific section of the shot, I'm not going to get any of those ugly halo artifacts when you go to create power windows or vignettes through other techniques. After this subject note here, I did an outside note, and this is basically affecting everything outside of my subject. And all I did here was bring down the shadows by one full stop. And that's to create just a slight vignette effect of the image. After I did these two things, I went into the Film Look Creator to create my look. So these are my settings inside of the FLC. The only things I affected were the Film Look, the color settings, the split tone, the vignette, the halation, 
and the grain. So under film look, I have the core look set to vintage. I think this color profile here is very beautiful. I think Black Magic did a good job with it. It basically adds three tones to the image. It adds a nice yellow in the highlights, it adds a green to the main body, which is this nice green that you're seeing overall here. And then it adds some blue in the shadows to help create a nice sort of fade from those greens into that cyan that we see so often in cinematic or maybe that were shot on film. Definitely check out the vintage core look. I think it's a good option when using the film look creator. I did not affect the skin bias. I didn't feel I needed to since the vintage core look that's being applied is treating my skin tones very well. Also balancing my image correctly, make sure that if I am using any sort of LUT or creative effect that's also a high quality effect and created by people who know what they're doing, then chances are my skin tones are in good hands. Of course, always double check that, always keep an eye on your skin tones to make sure they're right, but sometimes good quality tools do a lot of the work for you or help you to avoid doing a lot of work. Under my color settings, I didn't affect anything. The only thing that I did increase was the subtractive saturation. So by default, it's set to 0.12. I set it to 1.5. And then under split tone, I have the hue angle set to 32. And let me show you why. I'm gonna increase this all the way. Somewhere around 30 to 31. Or 25 to about 32, I think, is a very nice zone. I think this might also depend on what color space you're working on. But since I'm working in DaVinci Wide Gamut, it's right around 31, 32, and it applies just that very beautiful, nice toasty warmth in the highlights and the slightly bluish cyan to the shadows. And then I just have that set to 0.3. The main body of the look is being created by the vintage core look, but I did want to sort of expand the image across the warm and cool axis. So I added the split tone. And then I just added the vignette to create a little bit more focus on our subject here. Because the halation is so straightforward and I think it works very well, all I have to do is enable the halation. I have highlights only checked. The amount I have it set to 0.3, the radius I have it set to four, saturation set to one, and then I have the hue set to 0.3. That's because I usually like my halation to be a little bit more on the red side. So if I zoom in here and I increase this amount, you can see the halation here. And by default, it's slightly more orange and I just prefer to make it a little bit more red. And then for the amount, if you're wondering how much is too much, if I'm creating just a generic sort of basic film emulation, I just go into that edge, right? The edge of the highlight and the dark area, because that's usually when you'll see elation. It'll be in areas of high contrast. I'm just trying to blur that line. And that just adds to more of that soft look that film gives you. Film can feel sharp, but at the same time, there's a softness about it. And the halation is basically a, a certain type of glow, and that glow is a part of what makes that image to look sort of soft. I mean, you can be as creative as you want, but if you wanna just keep it sort of basic, just apply it until sort of the edge of the high contrast areas are sort of blurred with that nice red color. And then the other thing I did here was I chose the 16 millimeter preset. I decreased the amount a little bit. I think it was somewhere around 0.2. I desaturated the grain and set it to 0.1. And then the image defocus, I set it to 0.9, right? To give me, a yes, a little bit of that soft look, but not too much because I wanted to, for this look, preserve some sharpness in the image, give it a little bit more grit. Here is our image before. And here is our image after. You can see how we've got some very beautiful color going on here. And that grain is just so subtle, but it looks so nice. After I did that, I added a note after my film creator. And all I did was increase the low softness. And what that did was bring up the black point and help soften the low end to help create some of that creaminess that you get with film. And also to act as a sort of limiter for my black point. And I'll show you here what I mean by that in my contrast note. So before my FLC node, I have my contrast node. And then here in the HDR palette, I'm gonna increase my contrast all the way. And you can see that I have the ceiling set here that's coming from the FLC. Film Look Creator is applying an S-curve to your image. That does come with a ceiling and a floor. But then coming in here with a soft lip node, I'm able to affect and sort of set the limit for the black point. And again, I did that here in the low soft and I brought it up 
to recreate more of that filmic response in the low end. I'll go back to my contrast mode and I'll reset it. And here in my contrast, I went over to the gamma and I chose RE Lux C4. And this is gonna help me to apply an actual S-curve in my contrast here in the HDR palette because by default, the HDR palette does not apply an S-curve when you adjust the contrast, okay? If you go over to your project settings, and you go to general options, you have this option here, use S-curve for contrast, and that applies to the contrast control inside of the primaries palette, but it does not apply to the height, but it does not apply to the HDR wheels. You can get creative and choose any of the S-curves provided by some of the most popular gammas and Lock C4, having a very nice S-curve, I chose that. I might do a full tutorial on this technique, but this is basically how I adjust contrast. I'll increase contrast all the way. And then from here, I wanna use the pivot to find the beautiful shapes in my image, right? And if you have a background in art, then you might understand what I mean by finding the shapes in the image and sort of finding the beauty in those shapes, right? And so if, if I'm sort of just trying to find, scrub through the image and find the shapes that I like and sort of Go with that mood so for example let's say i liked these shapes right let's say i wanted to make them look a little bit more evil make them look a little bit more ambiguous these shapes sort of have that feel right it's sort of like a two-faced thing we obviously have the natural lighting of this image you know creating that effect but we can accentuate that here with our contrast if i wanted to not do that and let's say bring up the details of his face right and sort of get rid of that clear uh, shadow then I could maybe go here somewhere like right here. I think for this image, I'm going to set it right here. I like this dark, eerie look that these shapes are giving me. I like that we're getting a little bit of detail recovery here in the dark areas of our subject. So once I've found my shapes that I like, I'm going to reset the contrast, not the pivot. I'm going to reset the contrast, and then now I'm going to increase the contrast. And what I'm doing is I'm hiding those shapes that we selected, right? These shapes are being used to create the contrast in the image. All these white areas are being increased and all these dark areas are being decreased. And it's sort of embedding this image, this feel, and it's adding it to the image on a very subtle level. Now I'll just go into it, find that sweet spot, which I think is about here. I think the contrast control in the HDR palette is very sensitive, so typically you don't need to add too much, and that's okay. Here you go, before and after. And there you go, that's a very simple, straightforward workflow that you can follow, and some settings inside of FLC for creating a basic film look. One more thing that I wanted to show you is, let's say you're working with a whole timeline, right? Let's say you have different clips from the same video or something, and you wanted to apply this look across the video. Here's one way that you can go about it, and that's by using shared nodes. So I'm gonna right click on my FLC node and go to save as shared node. By default, shared nodes are locked, so I'm gonna unlock it, and then I'll just rename the skin, FLC. And then having uh, my main clip selected, I'm gonna select my other clips, go to right click, apply grade. Now I have that same look being applied to the rest of my timeline, and if I wanted to go in and fix the look if I go into the film creator node and let's say I wanted to warm up the overall look so I'll bring this up and I'll just be dramatic about it so you can see the difference now when I go over to the other clips those changes will be reflected there that's one way to do it another way that you could do it is to add your FLC node at a timeline level so instead of it doing here at the clip level node graph you can go to the timeline level and paste that in. It doesn't need to be a shared node. And likewise, if I go in and make an adjustment here, I will cool down the image. All those adjustments will be reflected. What you're basically doing here in Film Creator is creating the look DNA. You're creating the world that your video is going to live in. And so you don't want to get too specific. And that's why I didn't affect any contrast, any highlights, anything else other than the overall general components that create the look that we want. Then from there, I can go in and depending on how off all the other clips are compared to my hero clip,
I can go in and make adjustments depending, right? I can go into my power windows, move those around so that I'm choosing my subjects, right? Come in here as well. Make sure I'm over my subject. If I wanted to track those, I could do that as well. And that's just another way for you to get a very quick and simple film emulation effect right in DaVinci Resolve without any third party plugins. If you guys have any questions about what I did here, if you guys have any questions about Film the Creator, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. As always guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon on the next one.